Hello, Queen Elizabeth Hospital Radio, Brimlington. Hello, it's Ivan Brackenbury. I'm here to try out for the hospital radio presenter's job. Yeah, I know. Come, come in, then. Christ, Timmy Mallet's had a lobotomy. <laughs> oh, no, has he? I loved him. <laughs> Whack a day. Utterly, utterly brilliant. What a waste. Hey, yeah. I'm Stan. I'm a porter here at the hospital. I'm one of the radio volunteers. Are you going to be all right operating a radio studio? You can't operate your own fly. It's broke. The zipper's caught in the material. I've had proper radio training, though. I'm not completely stupid. No, there's definitely bits missing. <laughs> right, you'll be doing what we call a broadcast pilot. If you do OK, you can have a regular show. Yeah, brilliant. I've been out on the wards collecting requests. I've got some random facts to read out as well. I love random facts, me. The average person falls asleep in seven minutes. I've got the brain of a sponge. You mean, like a sponge? No. <laughs> right, I used to help out the last guy a lot with the show. You know, I came up with all the ideas. Mainly wacky wind-ups and stunts to make his show dead edgy. Oh, what happened to him? He got fired. <laughs> his show was too, uh, edgy. <laughs> if you need any help, I, I could do the same for you. Oh, brilliant, that would be great, thank you. Gotta watch your back with me, though. I'm the joke around here. <laughs> I'm always doing the wind-ups. Here's an idea for a stunt. Speculum roulette. Go on. It's dead simple, yeah. Five speculums, one's been in the fridge. You get some great audio. Right, I don't think so. What about finding the baby? It's like the card game, but we caught some new dads. No. <laughs> I'm not sure. I once, this is a good one, I redecorated the recovery room to look exactly like hell. So when they came round, you know, from the anaesthetic. <laughs> I was there dressed like the devil with the horns and the fork and everything. <laughs> I could do something like that for you. No, I was just thinking I should keep it simple for me pilot show. Music and chat. You might get a visit from Edwina Hamilton during your show. She's the hospital manager. She likes to give all the prospective volunteers the once-over, you know. You've got to watch her, though. She runs this hospital like Hitler. Is she very strict? No, she's got a tiny moustache. Oh. <laughs> Goodness, anything else I need to know? Yeah, well, listen, this is important, OK? Right. In case of emergency, there's a panic button installed here that locks the studio. Right. It's to stop the nutters and or terrorists getting in when you're on air. Right. Whatever you do, don't press the panic button by accident. Right. It's right next to the door handle. Right. You can't miss it. Right. Only a fool would confuse the two. Right. <laughs> Are you listening to any of this? Yes, yeah, sorry, the panic button. Do you think terrorists are likely to attack Queen Elizabeth Hospital radio station in Brimlington? No, of course not. Not now we've got a button installed. They'll probably have to go up the M1 to Hospital Radio Barnsley. Oh, those poor people. Right, I've got to go. Like I said, I'm the port around here and I'm on shift. And I've got a wheel load of geriatrics down to the weekly line dancing classes. Keeps them out of trouble. Oh, brilliant. You should go and watch them if you get a chance. It's a right laugh, honestly. It's like watching a remake of Michael Jackson's Thriller. <laughs> Slightly more frightening, a lot more smelly. Hey, it's Michael Jackson. Oh! Hey, I'll tell you what, on the way back, I could pick up a really interesting guest. Someone you can chat to, you know, someone to really spice up the show. I'll see what I can do for you. Oh, that would be great. Wait a minute. This wouldn't be one of your wacky wind-ups, would it? You wouldn't try and trip me up on my first day, would you, Stan? Would I? <laughs> Across the hospitals of Brimlington and the surrounding area. Live from Queen Elizabeth Hospital Radio. From maternity to the morgue. From cardiovascular to your rhino genital. This is Queen Elizabeth Hospital Radio. QEHR Queer Radio. If you're feeling queer, we're here. Broadcasting four hours a day from six till ten. And even longer at weekends. <laughs> Hello, you're listening to your new best friend, me, Ivan Brackenbury. Who am I? Ivan Brackenbury! And what am I? I'm bonkers. He's bonkers. I am bonkers. And this is the brand new Disease Hour on Hospital Radio. <laughs> it's my first ever pilot show. Disease Hour with Ivan Brackenbury on Hospital Radio. Get well soon. <laughs> A whole hour of my special blend of music and chat, and we're live on a Saturday! Sunday! Wait, hang on, Saturday. Monday! They're on a loop, just give me a minute. Tuesday! Wednesday! Nearly. Thursday! Friday! Here we go, Saturday! 1962! Hang on, wait a minute. 1963! It's another loop. 1964, 
1965. Got the gremlins in. Merry Christmas! <laughs> I've never done Saturdays. In fact, I've never done a show before. I've practised a lot in my bedroom. Well, we've got a great show lined up for you today. Requests and dedications and some random facts. And it was so lovely to meet you all on the walls today. I don't think I've signed so many autographs in all my life. I was there for about 45 minutes with me pen. So there's a big pile of those there now, if... Um, <laughs> Anyone wants one. A lot of you were very nervous about meeting me, and that's understandable. And on that note, if there are any nurses listening, if you could go and see June on Walton Ward, bed three. There's a little bit of cleaning up needs doing. Um, a bit pongy, I'm afraid. I'm sorry about that, June. They don't call me Butterfingers for nothing. <laughs> Anyway, um, we're staying with you now, June. How are you doodling, duck? I did ask her what she wanted me to play it, and she said creep, which I think is Radiohead. And then she said loser, which I know is by Beck. And then she said leave me alone, which is a Michael Jackson track. Ow! Uh, it's Queen Elizabeth Hospital Radio, queer radio. If you're feeling queer, we're here. <laughs> Hello, Queen Elizabeth Hospital Radio. If you're feeling queer, we're here. It's Edwina Hamilton, Hospital Manager. Open up. Hi, Edwina Duck. It's Ivan Brackenbury. I'm broadcasting my pilot show. What is that on your fingers? But, uh... <laughs> what on earth are you? I'm Ivan Brackenbury. Ivan Brackenbury! <laughs> and I'm bonkers. He's bonkers. <laughs> Don't do that. You know, your moustache looks nothing like Hitler's. <laughs> So, Eddie the Eagle Edwards has a simple brother. <laughs> oh, has he? They've kept that well quiet. It's probably because he's less known, because he doesn't ski. Bet they let him go sledging, though. You know you don't have to say everything you think. I'm hoping to take this show over permanently, Edwina Duck. I know your last presenter left under a cloud, but things will change from now on, cos I'm a safe pair of hands, like a Richard Allenson, I'll not let you down. <laughs> Shut up and hold the end of this tape measure. What are we measuring for? I need to know how many beds we can squeeze into this space. How will we broadcast with beds in here? You won't. I want to shut the hospital radio station down. Oh, my goodness, why? Why should the sick get free entertainment when I can charge them for premium-rate pay-per-view TV? I'm losing thousands of pounds because patients are listening to your drivel. Can you just shut us down like that? No, I need to convince the board that I have a good reason to. They're still into all that old-fashioned patient care and quality of life rubbish. Oh, no. If you make patients too comfortable, there's no incentive for them to get better. God only knows what hovels these northerners live in. <laughs> the more uncomfortable a patient is, the less of a tragedy it is when we can't keep them alive. That's my philosophy. <laughs> It's not really a philosophy, though, is it? Philosophy is more the study of the fundamental nature of knowledge, reality and experience. <laughs> what? Dictionary.com. <laughs> anyway, that's why the last presenter was so useful to me. His misguided, wacky wind-ups were giving me all the ammunition I needed to have this radio station shut down. So no one knows about this, then? No. And if you tell them, I'll have you killed. Hey, <laughs> don't be daft. You can't have me killed. <laughs> I'm a hospital manager. I have people killed all the time. It's what I do. <laughs> You're a really nasty lady. Why are you so mean? Well, ten years ago, I made the ultimate sacrifice for my husband's career. I moved to the north of England. <laughs> only to have him then run off with a 22-year-old northern boy. Have you any idea how humiliating that is for a woman? Can't really relate. A northerner? <laughs> I can't show my face back home, and now I have to fend for myself running this cesspit of a hospital full of sick northerners. If there's one thing worse than a northerner, it's a northerner in pain whinging. I ought duck and need feeding. Listen, love, and need changing. I pet, do we have to share three to a bed? <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you this. I think it's because I'm easy to talk to. Everyone opens up to me. It's because you're an idiot and there's no chance you'll understand what they're saying. Right. <laughs> 
looking at the state of you, it's only a matter of time before you screw up. Are you nervous, Ivan? A little bit. That's why I've got my brown trousers on. <laughs> I find brown calming. <laughs> You're in my personal space. You're on hospital premises, Ivan. You're in my space now. My space isn't a place, it's a social network. <laughs> Shut up. Right, I'm off to demoralise some nurses, but I'll be listening to you, Ivan Brackenbury. Just give me the excuse I need to have the whole station shut down, will you? I think I can safely rely on you. Oh, you can. You really can. <laughs> I won't let you down, Edwina Duck, I promise. I've got to go, the music's finishing. Hi there, it's your good friend by your sick bed and me, Ivan Brackenbury. Ivan Brackenbury! And that was some lovely music by Mr. Michael Jackson himself, Wacko Jacko. He's bonkers. <laughs> uh, allegedly. <laughs> Anyway, enough of the satire. Um... <laughs> right then, moving on. This request is especially for Frank, Julie and Michael, who are all down the STD clinic today. It's Soft Cell. Tainted love. Tainted love. Hiya, Queen Elizabeth Hospital Radio. It's your Plank. Open up, I've got a present for you. Fresh from the maternity ward. <laughs> Blimey, what you got there? It's a trolley. What's on it? It's a heavily pregnant lady. I thought she'd make a good guest for your show. You know, you can have a chat with her. Hey, up me duck. You were supposed to take me straight to the delivery unit. I've just been induced. Not properly. I'm Ivan. <laughs> I'm, um, Jenny. Ivan's going to put you on air, love. You'll be famous, and then we'll have you out of here in no time. Is this allowed? I'm about to give birth. Five minutes, Jenny, love, and then I'll take you to the delivery unit. No one's going to know you're missing. This is kidnapping. We'll meet at the delivery room immediately. Wait a minute. I know what's going on here. You're going to have to do better than this, then, if you want to catch me out. This is one of your wacky wind-ups, isn't it? Are you an actress? No, I'm not. You can't do this to a woman in my condition. That's not a condition, it's a pillow! Ow! Don't! Oh, you're very good. Leave it with me, Stan. I'll interview her as part of me show. Right, I'm off to the canteen for a salmonella sandwich. Oh, yeah, there's some notices for you to read out. Oh, thanks, Stan. If you need me, just ring me on the Moby. Right, have you two clowns had your fun now? OK, studio, we're going live. No, listen, I have to go to the delivery room. Shush you, you can't talk when I put the red light on, Jenny Duck. That's basic, you should know that being in show business. Hello. Your show's the award-winning station. Queen Elizabeth Hospital Radio. We've not won any awards, it's a play on words, as in hospital award. Anyway, <laughs> I've been given a few quick notices to read out, uh, thanks to my colleague Stan, and the answer to last week's medical student sweepstake was four weeks to live. Well done, Maureen. <laughs> And if you're here for the hemorrhoid clinic, I'm afraid they've double booked today and it's very busy, standing room only. <laughs> In a more, a live interview with a special guest. It's an actress pretending to be a pregnant lady who has joined me in the studio. But first, the fawning topic. Who remembers Spangles? Yes, it's Sweets You Remember or Sweet Memories. Sweet, sweet memories you pay. Give us a call on the internal phone line if you can remember sweets from when you were younger. The number is 0207... That's auto or seven. It's more of an extension than an actual phone number. It's the nostalgic sweets phone in. So here's one to get the ball rolling. Who remembers Spangles? And what else did you suck or chew as children? Oh, oh no! Oh shoot! What's your language, Jenny? Don't we're on air. Give me one minute. You're overdoing it a bit. This next record is for Joyce, who's in hospital with her osteoporosis. I hope a bit of ZZ Top will cheer you up. <laughs> Bad to the bone. <laughs> it started. I need help. Yeah, you do, potty mouth. What did I say it means when the red light's on? My waters are broken. No, it means you can't talk in the studio. <laughs> it's basic. You need to call someone and get me to a delivery room. I'm having the baby right now. Look. Oh, blimey, that's realistic. <laughs> because I am real, you idiot. So the wacky wind-up wasn't that you were pretending to have a baby, but that you are having a baby. Well, that is dead edgy. I'll use the phone. Hello? Oh, hello, I'm trying to ring out. It's about the sweets, I can remember some. 
Oh, yeah, well, um, let me take your details and we'll call you back in a minute. Who's speaking, please? It's, uh, Daley Thompson. <laughs> and I'm 86, so I can remember loads. Hang up on him! I can't, he sounds like a dead good caller. Nostalgic. Oh, this is an emergency. Call me back in five minutes, Daley. All right, then. Oh, hello. Hello, I can remember Squeaks. Um, yeah. Yeah, have you had Spangles? Yeah, that was my suggestion. Uh, look, I'll take your details anyway and call you back. It's Brian Cant. Just hang up and hurry up. Will you call me back in five minutes, Mr Cant? All right. Hello, have you had Spangles? Oh. <laughs> like, one minute. This is no good. The phone lines are jammed for the Squeaks phone in. It's like a red hot topic. Topic, there's one. Nuts and nougat. <laughs> You'll need to run and fetch someone, then. I can't. I'm on air. There's only a few minutes left on this record. Do it! <laughs> oh, shout. You're getting me flustered now. Right, what was it Stan said? The big red button opens the door. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now look what I've done. I've hit the panic button. I wasn't supposed to hit it, but I panicked. Well, that's good. At least someone will come and help us. No, it's the opposite of that. It's bad, cos now no-one can get in to help us. I've locked down the station and I don't know how to get out. What do you mean? You locked it down? It's a lockdown system to deter terrorists and or nutters. <laughs> now I've activated it. It's locked the door. I don't know how to disable it, so we're trapped inside. Well, bang on the door. It's soundproof. Why don't you broadcast a call for help on your show? Ah, these contractions are closed. I don't think you realise the importance of the situation. This is my broadcast pilot. They're trying me out. It's got to sound great, otherwise we don't get me on show. Plus the boss of the hospital is evil and bitter and like Hitler, but without the moustache and she's not Austrian. She's from Berkshire. I had butterfingers and she turned her husband gay. And she doesn't want people... <laughs> She doesn't want people to listen to my drivel and she wants to shut the whole station down. She hates the northerners and the sick and she wants to charge patients for entertainment and only I know and if I tell anyone she'll have me killed because she's a hospital manager and that's what she does for a living. One day all this will be beds. Oh! <laughs> that really hurt. Calm down and think. I am having a baby right now. I need proper medical supervision. All right. I've got an idea. I'll do the phone-in as normal, that'll clear the phone lines, stop anyone else phoning in, and then we'll call for help. Plus, it'll sound dead brilliant, it's a really popular topic. Oh, forget about going on air. Shush, That's we're going live, red light means you can't talk, remember? Unbelievable. Well, we've had a great response to our phone-in on R2R7, there's still plenty of callers to get through, so, line one, who's there? It's Peter St. Lee. Are you giving away sweets? Um, no, we want you to remember them, Peter. Why? It's a feature. Sounds rubbish. Oh. <laughs> OK, let's go to line uh, one. Who's there? Walter Raleigh here. <laughs> I'd just like to agree with that last caller. Well, go on then. There's too many immigrants. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't understand. The chairman's not giving the manager the freedom he needs. <laughs> OK, thanks for calling. Let's see who's on line one. We've only got the one line. Uh, what sweets can you remember? Thank God. The phone's been engaged for ages. Who's speaking? It's Bucks Fizz. <laughs> I've got a really tight pain across the chest. Is there someone there that can help? Not really. I'm doing a nostalgic sweets phone-in book, Mr Sviz. <laughs> I think I'm having a heart attack. Oh, I know how to prevent those. Quick, tell me. What do I have to do? Get plenty of exercise and eat lots of fruit and veg. <laughs> How's that going to help you, Plank? Right, OK, thanks for that. The phone lines are now closed. Please do not ring in. No more calls, please. <laughs> Shush! This is for Frank on Saltergate Ward, suffering with emphysema. The cause. Leave me breathless. Come on. Brilliant, that was my first phone-in. I think I did OK. I hope the hospital manager was listening. She'll be very impressed. I don't care! Phone for help! Oh, yeah, that. I'll call Stan. Hurry, please. I'm going to have this baby any minute. Oh, it's come to voicemail. Hi, Stan. It's Ivan Brackenbury from Queen Elizabeth Hospital Radio, QUEHR, if you're feeling queer, etc. Um, <laughs> if you get this, will you give us a call back? It's an emergency. I've got myself into a spot of bother with that pregnant lady. It's gone a bit beyond edgy. <laughs> right, it won't be a minute. This baby isn't going to wait for him. You're going to have to deliver it. Goodness, I can't. I'm a DJ. I've got the wrong skill set. How's my special blend of music and chat going to help? <laughs> Shut up! Just do it! Let me look up some help on the internet. 
Right, if I do a search for pregnant ladies, enter. <laughs> oh, goodness. How is he helping? <laughs> I know, go on Wikipedia, a trustworthy source. Giving birth to a baby. All right, here we go. Here's a list of women who have died from childbirth. Um, <laughs> Catherine Parr, Elizabeth of York, Jane Seymour, the actress, I loved her cakes. Focus! <laughs> Give me a minute, I'm looking, okay. Do you have a delighted cervix? <laughs> Dilated and I've no idea! Right, that's no good. Oh, here we go. Caesarean. Oh no, I don't think I could do that, not without a toolkit. <laughs> Do you mind if I have a look at the business end? Be my guest. Let the dog see the rabbit. <laughs> right. I think you have a full dilation. It looks like it does in the picture. According to this, the next bit might burn or sting a little. <laughs> if you just want to lie back and relax and start to breathe deeply with your stomach, what I need to do now is just put a tune on. What? <laughs> Please, for God's sake, don't leave! I've got, I've got to leave. The track's coming to an end. I can't have dead air. It's an important show. I've already explained this to your management and listening. Sod the management! How far apart are your contractions? Not very far. Right, I'll choose a short tune then. <laughs> Shush in the studio! Going live! Red light! Quiet time! Okay, keep the music going. This is for Agnes. She's 96 years old and she's had a very good innings. <laughs> But unfortunately, it's a really fast wicket and the light's fading and Flintoff's just coming up to ball, so... <laughs> Hang on in there, Agnes. Just play defensive shots. That's what I do. <laughs> She's dying. So How are we getting on, Jenny Duck? Have you done it yet? Oh my goodness, I can see its head. I hope. That is its head, isn't it? Let me check. Enlarge. Oh no, I'm minimised. <laughs> okay, its head is fully engaged in the pelvis. Wow, it's got a word for everything. It's brilliant, this. I love the internet. Full of facts. I'm never off it. I heard there's this bloke in California that's nearly finished reading it. <laughs> Do you know, I'm really enjoying this. It's a lot easier than that. with me? Um, no, I think you should stay on the trolley, Jenny Duck, because you're the one giving birth. <laughs> I prefer it up here with you at the head end. Mind you, both ends of the head end at the moment, aren't they? You're a bit like a push-me-pull you. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it in my life. What? It's the song from Dr. Doolittle, he talked to the animals. Ow, oh, you're really hurting me again. Ah! Oh, God! Stop it, here. Goodness, what a cutie! It's beautiful! Oh, the miracle of life! It's a mini Winston Churchill! <laughs> Do you want me to hold it while you sit up? Um, yes, okay. What have I had? It's a lovely baby. <laughs> Listen, this song's coming to an end. Have it back, will you? And explain to it about the red light. I can't afford any slip ups now. Well, we're keeping the music going and keeping it tight today on the show. Hello to Dave Quinn on Arkwright Ward. He's coming for a vasectomy and unfortunately it's gone sceptic. <laughs> it's very swollen and very painful. This is for you, Dave. MC Hammer. I can't touch this. I can't touch this. Well done for keeping it quiet. Thank God it doesn't take after its mam. You know about the red light, don't you? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> oh, it's a bit too soon for it meeting celebrities. It's overawed, look. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth Hospital Radio, Ivan Brackenbray. Shut up, it's Stan. Oh, Stan, thank God you phoned back. Have you been listening? How's it sounding? Am I doing all right? Yeah, not bad. I like the phoning. I remember Spangles. Oh, they were my favourites. Fruity, weren't they? And square. Yeah, boiled sweets, but like a sherbetty rough finish on the outside. Sort of dimpled. For God's sake! Oh, yeah. Stan, I need the card to get out of the studios. I've locked them down by accident and there's no room in here because there's three of us now, if you know what I mean. I mean, the lady gave birth. What does she have? A baby. <laughs> 
Really mucky one. Listen, there's no culture plank. The system's to stop the terrorists and our nutters getting in. It's not locked from the inside, just push it open. Oh, flipping it, we're not locked in. I am bonkers. You know. <laughs> Can't hear you, Stan, you're breaking up. You're like Norman Collier. I said, you know. <laughs> no, tell me when you see me. He's gone. Well, we've had some fantastic news. That was Stan, and he thought the show went really well. <laughs> Well, it's a shame it's going to be your last one. Pass me the phone and I'm going to call hospital management and get you thrown off hospital premises for good. This is the most degrading experience of my life. What a way to bring a child into the world. You stupid imbecile, I could kill you. Listen, you mustn't worry, because your hormones should kick in any second now and you'll become euphoric. <laughs> Whatever you do, please don't phone the hospital manager. It'll be a disaster, not just for me. But the future of hospital radio broadcasting in Brimlington hangs in the balance. Right, that might be her, the hospital manager. Well, are you going to answer it then? No, I don't think I am. Well, if you don't, I will. Hello, Queen Elizabeth Hospital Radio. <laughs> if you're feeling queer, we're here. Ivan Brackenbury speaking. Edwina Hamilton, hospital manager. Hey up, Edwina Duck. It's Ivan. I'm just finishing up my show. Any feedback? How am I doing? Do I get the gig permanently? I thought you sounded inane, vacuous, boring, cliché-ridden and trite. Right. The perfect radio DJ. <laughs> the job's yours, but only because I'm pretty sure you'll slip up and then I can pounce and this hospital radio station will be history! Over my dead body! That's a figure of speech, Edwina. I don't actually mean it. Pass me the phone. I want to speak to her. Who's that? Uh, no one. Shh. Listen, I need you to do a public announcement for me. Of course, that's part of my remit as a public service broadcaster. Shut up! Just take this down. We've had a massive superbug breakout in the maternity unit delivery room and it's off limits to all personnel. Right. We've had a... Anyone who has been in contact with that unit in the last 24 hours has to report to hospital management as soon as possible for checkups. Massive super... Any babies born there in the last 24 hours are now in quarantine. Bug. Have you got that, imbecile? Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, do you want that over a music bed, or shall I make a catchy jingle? Just read it! <laughs> right, Edwina Duck. Um, what about women who give birth to babies in radio studios? Are they all right? What are you talking about? Nothing. I'm just being hyper-theoretical. Listen, you've just had a really lucky escape. The delivery unit is infested with massive, really super bugs. And all the babies born there today have been quarantined. I've checked, it doesn't affect women giving birth in radio studios, so you're safe. In fact, you're a very lucky lady. Thank you so much. And thank you for helping to deliver my very beautiful baby. Hormones. <laughs> right, we're going live. I'll name him after you. What's your name again? Uh, uh, red light. Let's not set a bad example for the baby. Can't trust you. Right, well, we're coming to the end of my pilot show, and it's great news, everybody. I'm going to be joining you on the airwaves permanently. And I've got some really exciting ideas for your listening pleasure. Next week, we'll be reading someone's test results out live on air. Um, it's going to be like Jeremy Kyle. And, and also, I plan to be embedded with an ambulance crew and broadcast my show live from the back of an ambulance. The ambulance crews do an amazing job every single day, bringing in more listeners to us here at the hospital. <laughs> I'd love to have your company again. Hopefully you won't be around, though, you know, because you'd have got better, obviously, not because, you know. Um, <laughs> but if it is the other one, then, you know, thanks for listening. And, um, I'm just very proud to think that my voice is the last thing you'll ever hear. <laughs> anyway, here's the last request. You may have heard in the news earlier about the scaffold collapse in Brimlington. There were several workers at the top of that scaffold when it collapsed. They're all here in Queen Elizabeth Hospital being treated for their injuries. I want to take their minds off all that with this super upbeat record by Ms. Jerry Halliwell. <laughs> show was written by Tom Binns and was performed by Ivan Brackenbury as himself with Justin Morehouse, Ella Kenyon and Charlotte Hudson. The producer was Julia McKenzie.